Hi. Welcome to the smallest rock concert of all time. Thank you. I have lived a combined 30 years on this planet, and I've come to the realization there are certain foods I just don't like. Some of them, in fact, I downright loathe. I'm not sure how I acquired my distaste for these items, but at some point I did, and I have my reasons. Examples, you ask? A done. I hate bananas. The taste, the texture, the overall demeanor of the fruit. I'm never sure how to eat it without looking controversial. The taste of a banana is so disgusting to me that even banana-flavored runts are tossed aside. I dislike pineapple. Any fruit that has that defensive of an outer layer should not be digested. It does not want to let us in, yet we force ourselves. Pineapples are too sweet and overpower any other item they're paired with. If celebrities were fruit, then pineapple would be Robin Williams. I can't stand strawberries. When people hear this, they lose their mind. It's like strawberries are human catnip or something. Over the years, I've been so annoyed defending my hatred for strawberries that I end up just telling people I'm allergic. It is quite possible that there is nothing in the world more repulsive to me than how a strawberry feels. The thought of biting into one is on par with kissing a diaper, a poopy one. The only other food that comes close to the repellent strawberry is a pickle. To me, pickles are like the Stone Temple Pilots. The idea makes sense. However, it looks a little wrong. The follow-through is depressing. And just when you think it's gone, the taste comes right back up. <laughs> one time on a date, a girl ordered a pickle. She took one bite, and I told her I had to go. I drove her home without talking and never called her again. My mind was made up. Those who sided with the pickle were sworn enemies of the House of Dallas and not to be trusted. I hold these truths to be self-imposed, and I don't care what I owe to what you think. I don't like what I don't like. No one can change my mind except me. Which brings us to the events of last year. The day started like any other day. A groggy disappointment to what my life could have been. <laughs> On my way to work, this weird feeling came over me, a feeling I've never experienced before. I wanted food, and my body was confused as to what. We wanted something salty, so chips. No, not chips. We wanted something juicy, so maybe liquid chips. <laughs> My brain, stomach, and mouth raced through pictures of foods they were familiar with until they clicked together like a slot machine. I was craving a pickle. Ding, ding, ding. Jackpot. I ignored my desire all day, thinking it was an anomaly, like my radio career, the 2008 Celtics Championship. <laughs> but the next day it happened again, and this time as soon as I woke up. I thought, this is stupid. I should just go back to sleep. The next day, the craving was even stronger and more specific. I didn't want just a pickle. I wanted a cheeseburger with pickles on it. Oh, man. Not only did this sound good, but this sounded like the best idea anyone ever had. Ever. That day I decided on my lunch break I would go to the best burger joint near my work and pick up this heavenly creation. Unfortunately, the area in which I work doesn't lend itself to the creme de la creme of eateries, so I decided to go with the best burger place I knew was close, in and out I walked up to the semi-attractive employee who smiled so big it hurt my face, <laughs> ready to order and in essence change a huge part of my life. Before I opened my mouth, I had a quick thought. I've never had pickles on an In-N-Out burger before. Do they even have pickles here? I asked the employee like I was buying drugs. Uh, hey, bro, do you guys have pickles here? He quickly returned my insensitivity by saying, Oh, yeah, bro, we got pickles. <laughs> Relieved, I ordered a double-double, no tomatoes, light onion, add pickles. You got it, man. Oh, cool, man, cool. <laughs> the burger came out, and not sure what to do, I stared at the pickles for a second, quietly telling them, don't you dare let me down. 
It took me a long time to get here. I opened wide, assuring I wouldn't get just pickles, and then... Now, I've had Mario Batali's squab. I've eaten Zach Allen's goat cheese ravioli. I've been treated to Tom Calicchio's meatloaf sandwich, and I've even had the head chef at Donovan's personally cook me filet mignon. But I swear... On that day, as I sat in my truck, nothing maybe could ever or will ever taste as good as a sloppily put together dripping mess that is a double double no tomatoes, light onions with added pickles. For somewhere in this flavored land, the sun is shining bright. <laughs> the chefs are cooking somewhere, and somewhere bellies are light, and somewhere men laughing, and kids are lapping popsicles. But there's newfound joy in San Diego, for mighty Dallas now likes pickles. Unlike Herman Melville, I now felt like anything was possible. I had just torn down a gigantic self-imposed wall in my life. Like Germany in 1989, freedom was finally here. I just needed the wall to come down to hyperbolize the symbolic truth of denying myself simple pleasures. I left in and out went back to work, and made a list of all the things my Irish stubbornness have deprived me of. There's a list of tangible items I have pushed aside for years without ever really trying. Neil Young... The Beatles, Katherine Heigl movies, <laughs> Heineken, and anything that hipsters like. I made a dedication to reopening my world. At the ripe old age of 29, it's a lot harder than you might think. First up, I had my friend Burmy the White Album and Neil Young's Silver and Gold. And you know what? Those albums kick ass. Next, I watched Knocked Up, and guess what? That movie's hilarious. I was ecstatic. Then I watched 27 Dresses. Maybe I should slow down with the list. <laughs> I decided to go back to the thing that got me here in the first place, the dread triad of fruit, the pineapple, the banana, and the strawberry. I set up a time to try these items and made sure I would be by myself. I shunned all onlookers to avoid overpowering influence. I got a fruit plate at a local cafe and downed a slice of pineapple. I winced like someone watching 27 Dresses. <laughs> I can see why someone would like the pineapple, but those people have never had fun dip. Then came the banana. I decided to try one in a Sunday. Guess what? Horrible. There is no redeeming quality in a banana. Vitamins and minerals, whatever. Just get the hell out of my ice cream. <laughs> Last up, the dreaded strawberry. I went to my grandpa's. He grows strawberries and has long tried to force feed me this fruit since I could walk. He picked out two from a fresh bowl and said, on the count of three, and don't chicken out. <laughs> like someone about to eat boogers on a dare... I closed my eyes and bit down. For somewhere in this fruitful land, the sun is shining bright. The chefs are cooking somewhere, and somewhere bellies are light. And somewhere kids are laughing, and men are enjoying roast duck. But there is no joy at grandpa's, for strawberries fucking suck. Thank you. <laughs>